Hi, this is Stan. Welcome back. Well, today we're talking about broken guides. So I've got a bunch of these Hornby Scale Electrics NASCAR slot cars. I collected a bunch of these back when I had a slot car track and a little club of kids at school where I was teaching. And we had a lot of fun with these, but there's kind of one problem area on these cars. So I've been racing these through the years on wood tracks, not your typical Scale Electrics plastic track or even Carrera track. And these guys are really not a deep track guide by any stretch of the imagination. And they're, as is, they're a two-piece kind of snap-together guide. Really didn't do much with these cars to make them kind of fun racing cars. Added some slip-on tires. And but we continually have a problem with these little guides snapping and breaking off. So here you can see this is a little two-piece guide. This disc snaps on and it retains the small bit of braid. So I pulled the body off and you can see here haven't done much with these cars. Added just a tiny bit of weight here. Nothing was very calculated. And here's the little guide assembly. And this one is still intact. So you can see it's got the braid on the two sides. And here's the typical problem. The blade snaps off completely. Plus, these are not super great um, guides for the deep wood tracks either. So in addition to being kind of tippy, these cars can come flying off and they really should have a, a more robust guide. Here's a kind of a standard deep guide for wood tracks. Well, if you've watched this channel recently, you know that I've been messing around with the 3D printer, just trying to get my uh, toe in the water of that technology. And one thing I really wanted to do was try and create my own deep wood track guide for the Scale Electrics Hornby slot cars. And so I was able to get some things printed and let me describe what I came up with. So here you can see these pieces of plastic came directly off the 3D printer and two pieces make up one guide. Now the stock guides on the slot cars, they are two pieces, but they snap together and they trap the braid in sort of that um, standard scale electrics way. But these are not like that. These two pieces get super glued together so it ends up as being one guide like this, similar to a standard deep wood track guide. So here's a chassis with the stock guide removed and you can see it's got a little recessed area and I was doing some research online and I really didn't want to replace the OEM guides on these cars like I said because I'm running them mostly on wood tracks. So it's got a little recess and I think I found a couple of places where you could buy little keystone inserts that bring the actual guide housing up flat with the bottom of the chassis. And then there's a specific guide that you can purchase. And the trouble is this is a relatively small diameter hole and a lot of the guides will not fit inside of this space. And so it was kind of a pain trying to find all the necessary parts online to just swap out the guides. So I decided to experiment 
let me see if I can just make my own. That would be so easy to replace these guides with something that I could fire off on the 3D printer. So let's head over to the computer a second and I'll show you what I did to come up with this. So if you go on Thingiverse, there's a million zillion uh, .stl files for you to start playing with. And I was lucky enough to find a file called GuideFlag V3 by Wayne69X. And this was the starting point for the guide that I'm going to use. He's already done all the hard work. And so I downloaded this file and then opened it up in Tinkercad and began to do some customization of it. So here's my disclaimer. I'm pretty new to this whole process, just learning about the whole 3D world. Anyway, so you can see here's a version of the file that I created so that I could print two at the same time. And you'll notice I've got two of the lower halves, the guide flags. And what I did was I stretched these out to make them a little taller. That was a pr pretty easy job. That wasn't too difficult. These were a little more tricky. The diameter here was already just perfect so that it would fit within the chassis. But I had trouble with this actual vertical shaft column, so I had to do some alteration here. So what I needed to do, I found that a couple different things. First of all, this inner column here was just a little bit too small in diameter. It wasn't a very tight fit into the chassis. So I knew that I had to do some change on that. Plus, I needed a little bit of a of filler to add to the bottom as if it were like a washer to fill some of the gap in there. And so by using a one of the, the shapes of like a tube shape, I brought two tube shapes into play and kind of fitted them in here. And this did a third thing, and that is it reinforced the strength of that vertical column. So you can see I increased the diameter of the column left a little space at the top because there's a little lip on the inside of the, the chassis housing that you have to account for. And then this washer, built-in washer, actually, along with the extra thickness of the column, adds extra strength to the column. So I was able to get that all rigged up here on Tinkercad and then get it all sliced up for my printer. So here are the two pieces as they come off the printer. You can see this guide flag half that has the increased vertical height. And then you can see here, I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but there's the original vertical column. I can't remember if I shortened or lengthened that original column right now. But then it's got the additional wrap around it to increase its diameter. And then you can see there the little washer on the bottom which adds spacing for the gap in the chassis as well as reinforcement at the bottom of this pin. And there's the little space that I'm talking about to be filled by that little spacer. So let's glue these two pieces together. So I have the guide flag half in this little clamp here. I'm going to put a little super glue on there. Kind of smear it around a little bit. And we'll stick the top half on there and just wait for that glue to set up. All right, here it is, the two pieces glued together. So let's take a look. So we're going to use the little pieces of braid that we're already on the car, so we'll get the ends kind of flattened out and they get fed up from the bottom through the two slits on the front. So I know this is getting kind of small here, but this little collet, we strip the insulation off this wire, stick it through the collet, bend the tip over, and then it will shove down between the braid and the front of the guide and there's a little rounded canal on the front that's just made for that to shove down in. 
just like that. And here's the guide all mounted on the chassis. Not a lot of play in it. It's fairly stiff and that will help hold the car a little bit. Well, what do you say we put it on the track and give it a test? Well, I've done a bunch of laps here at Lakeside with this scaly car and the new deep guide that we printed out of PETG. And I also, at a club race, did a bunch of laps over at a hill climb track owned by Steve Hill. And so far, this has worked out really well. The big question, I think, is... Well, it's easy to print out for me. I have the file already done, so whenever I need to print a couple of guides, it just takes a few minutes to do that. It's a small file. The big question is the durability of it. It seems to work fine. I'm really happy with the performance and how easy it is to make the switch. The big question will be how breakable is it? What's the toughness of this product as it holds up? or doesn't hold up over time, and I'll let you know what I find out. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and hope to see you right here next time. Mm -hmm.